Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Thanks for tuning in once again to the Epic Conquerors podcast. Please don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, family, and all your community. We're going to have an epic time discussing our topic of the week, which is overcoming negative, in a negative dialogue. Whoa, overcoming, that's such an important one. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's overcoming that little voice, Judy. You know that little yeah. voice that sits on your shoulder, yep. that keeps telling you you're not worthy, that you'll never mount to anything. Well, we're going to discuss that topic Yay. and prove that it's all just lies. All right. So, you know, on this podcast, we love to deal with those challenges that we all deal with on a daily basis. Together as a community, we fight them, we face them, and we experience epic victory over them, right? Yes, we do. Today, we're blessed to have an amazing guest with us, Salt Freedom. Thank you, Salt, for joining us today. All the way from Vancouver. Yeah. All the way from Vancouver. Yeah, we love Vancouver. We love the internet. Yes, let's do that. (laughs) <laughs> what an amazing experience. We can share our experiences with people all over the world via the internet. So we're going to start and we're going to kick this one, uh, this Epic Conquerors podcast off today. And we're going to ask Salt just to share a little bit of her background and just give us a little bit about that epic story of yours. Oh, gosh. Did you say little and epic story in the same <laughs> sentence? <laughs> okay. Let's, you, you opened up a can of That's moron, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's so awesome to be able to talk about negative inner dialogue because I feel like my whole life has been riddled with negative beliefs about myself that either I concocted on my own or that I adopted from someone else and behaved like they were true. And I allowed them to confine me and trap me and identify me and, and really limit me in what I thought was possible for myself and my life. And it, it also blocked me from a relationship with God because not only only did I have judgments about God judging me, you know, yeah, <laughs> the classic exactly. judge, the judger. I think that's pretty uh, classic I also, MO. <laughs> yeah. I, I also felt like I had done too many bad things mm. to ever be forgiven and accepted, um, even if he was real. And so that, that journey was really all festering inside of the, the negative dialogue conversation that we're having today. So I love being here and talking about this. That's great. And we, we're going to go into one of the, one of the questions that we wanted to ask you, um, Sultan. We were speaking earlier and you were mentioning something with regards to judgments and you know, how when you were growing up, you had a lot of judgments with regards to Christians and obviously the whole Christian culture. Um, so my question is, like, why, why are these judgments? And can you perhaps like walk us through and give our audience a little bit of insight into what created this narrative for you because I had the same narrative growing up as a kid so we'd love to hear you know what these negative judgments were and how you overcame those wow yeah there were so many I think uh, as a creative you know out of the box thinker I often got misinterpreted as rebellious or difficult or you know negative in a lot of ways because I wanted to reinvent the world I wanted to do something new and <laughs> my kind of world <laughs> yeah it was just really on my heart to be creative and and be um, be my own person you know and so I think a lot of the interpretation of that was like, we need to squash this. We need to control this. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of the people around me were using God as the justification for why I could not do certain things. And I think, you know, that combined with a lot of lukewarm Christianity, I, it was very rules based. It was a faith, a faith of convenience, you know, uh, when it, when it was convenient, it was there. And when it was an inconvenient to align your life with biblical truth, it left. I saw saw a lot of genie in the bottle faith where it was like, oh, the, now we're really in trouble. So now we believe and now we're going to pray. <laughs> and uh, so I saw that a lot. And I, I, I saw a lot of take it or leave it faith too, which is like, yeah. okay, I like this part of the Bible. I don't like this part. Yeah. Uh, also, I like this thing over here. So I'm going to add it in. And so there was a lot of, you know, the building of your own religion, really. Totally. And um it just, it's like it, a spiritual smorgasbord, isn't it? You know, I'll have right? a little of this and a little of that, but I don't want that. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. It's like putting ourselves in the position of God. And I thought, okay, well, if everyone's doing that, then there's really no faith here at all. It's literally what you think. So you're almost yeah. assigning yourself this, this position of God likeness. And then you're using what you've created to rule and dominate me. And I do not like that. And so preach. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, and then, so that, that really did cause me to see uh, Christians in a very distorted light. I saw them as weak people who needed rules and they were judgmental and, uh, and, uh, and that a lot of them were very unintelligent about their faith. They were, they were really traditionalists instead of in a relationship. And so all of that together was nothing that I respected, nothing that I wanted to stand for. And so I really rejected it and allowed it to almost be the you know, the thing that I rebelled against, which then ultimately controls you anyway, because when you're rebelling at something and doing the opposite, you're really just under its control. So I spent a lot of of my life being in rebellion to God or what I thought was God when it, when it was really not. So based on what you were saying right there, what was, what brought you out of that? So what was the aha moment that you were like, wow. And you know, this is, this is the way I see it right now. But then obviously something happened that, gave you that, that you realized like a relationship with Jesus was so important and turned your life around. What was that? You know, I, I don't think it was one main event, but there are some pivotal moments that ended up being put together for me. And, uh, you know, I did go to a camp when I was young and it was a Christian camp and it was so authentic. It was so love driven. It was very, um, we were in the Bible, we were learning the word, we were, you know, having conversations that mattered about life and culture and how to live in alignment with it. And even though I was young, I re- I remember n- learning about like Noah's Ark and the rainbow. And that very day, the rain stopped while like we went into the house to learn. It was pouring rain. And when we opened the door at the end, there was a rainbow in the sky. And I was like, whoa. God is awesome. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> like yes. they can't work like a message that. from heaven. <laughs> right. And there were there were little things like that that I mean they didn't turn my life around or have me repent or become a true believer, but I think they all ended up working together. Uh, I have you know, shared publicly. I don't know if you wanted to go here. It kind of sounds dark when you start talking about suicide and and uh, just having lived the life that I did in rebellion from God and from the control of authority in my life, uh, I ended up making quite a mess for myself, uh, you know, drug use and uh, hanging out with people who were just not good for me. And um, a lot of dysfunctional relationships, um, allowing myself to be abused, you know, by boyfriends, things like that. So it, it got really dark. And there was a point at which I was just done. Like Mm -hmm. I just felt so done. And I remember going into my mom's medicine cabinet and I took, you know, whatever pills I could find in there. And I remember walking to a hill behind our house and I was, I remember sitting there and I was holding the pills and it was weird because I was talking to God, even though I didn't really have a relationship with him. It was one of those dark times where it's like, feels like the last moment. And I was saying, like, I'm really sorry. I know this probably isn't what you want, but I just feel done. And I remember having thoughts like, well, how are they going to find me? Who's going to find me? How long is this going to take? You know, and then all of a sudden there were there were kids that came out from the project and they came over to the hill. And I was like, oh, well, I don't want them to be here. And I kind of just went into a fog. I don't even know how long I sat there. But I, I remember feeling like a force just like picked me up and they were, and just like took me home. Just like, get up, start walking. Don't sit on this hill. And I was walking home with the pills in my pocket, almost feeling like a failure because I didn't go through with it. And something was like shining in the grass. And I was like, what wow. is that thing over there? And I walked over and in the grass was a chain, a broken chain with a cross on it, with Jesus on the cross. Wow. And I'm in a huge field. Like, even if I knew that thing was there, I never could have found it. And the fact that it was literally at my feet, you know, was, was another sign. Like, you, th- there is so much more meant for you than this. This is a season you're going to get through this, you know? Yeah. You know, the scripture talks about when the enemy comes in like a flood, then God lifts up a standard and you can really see how in your incident, as well as other guests that we've had also have had this journey. And yet God comes through and breaks through and gives the opposite of that 
inner negative dialogue that the enemy was trying so hard to hammer you with, and he lost. And that is so exciting because God just gave you a sign that he was with you and that there was hope for you. And I think that really um, kind of says to me a lot about your name. You go by Salt Freedom. (laughs) And I love that because you're like, I'm not going to be put in that box. I'm going to be free. And how did you come up with that name, Salt Freedom? That was another time that God showed up for me. I mean, I was working in branding, so I was helping people, um, you know, design optical identities for their missions in the world. And I was also, that was kind of like the smaller part of, of what I was doing. I was also coaching women through eating disorders, going from disorder to free, because that was a huge part of my story also. Um, and so having struggled for 13 years with that and wanting to pay forward the earthly lessons that I, you know, had as a result of going in from such a dark place to a place of like owning my physicality and my voice and, and my uniqueness, I was looking for a name. I was like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what this name is. And, and I was just kind of like using my branding brain to try and figure out what the name of this program was going to be. And it was literally, I was sitting on the couch and I literally feel like it was almost like God put a USB cable into my brain. And, and I, I didn't audibly hear anything, but I, I got this message, your name is Salt. Wow. And I don't, I don't like to talk about it too much because I know it sounds kind of weird, but it absolutely happened. And I was like, that's weird. I wonder what the, what the symbolism of this name is. So obviously, I was a, a very brand new Christian, like baby, baby, baby. And so I'm in the Bible, like looking at the significance of salt. And then I'm, you know, also looking at the actual physical properties of salt. Like, so obviously biblically, like salt, you know, being the salt of the earth and a light on a hill and also being worth your salt. Also salt is, it's a heat, it's a healing mechanism. It conducts electricity, it it exfoliates, it it does, it flavors, you know, it does preserves, it does so many beautiful things. And, and, and also I have a, a way of being about myself when I'm in a coaching situation and I'm really going at the darkness that is living yes. in the life of a woman who's struggling with this. And it can feel salty, you know? It's like it stings a little. It's like we're looking right at the enemy in your life together. And, you know, so that can feel salty. And so it all made sense. But I said to God, I was like, this is kind of weird. Like people are not going <laughs> to take to this very well. Like they're going to think I'm weird. And then my daughter, you know, came up and she handed me a book and she said, mommy, can you read the Bible to me? And I was like, okay. So she's again, sending me to the Bible. So I'm researching the Bible. And then I went upstairs. I was like, God, I know that you're telling me this, but it just seems wacko. Like, I just don't know if I can do it, if people will take me seriously. And I, I walked into my office. I sat down at the computer. I pressed send and receive on my email. One email came in and it was a Groupon. And the title of the email said salt therapy. Wow. <laughs> because it was for one of those rooms where you go and sit in the salt room. So it felt I like- I love it how bad. God downloads his messages to us in so many unique, different kinds of ways. I mean, it's just really epic, you know? It's and it's what amazes me is that a lot of what you were talking. I had very similar experiences. I had you know back in going through a phase in my life. I had that same suicidal tendency, and I just remember clearly as well. It was so when God just reached. When I say you couldn't, it wasn't a physical see a thing, but you could feel the presence. We just reached down and grabbed you, and said, "Son, this is not for you. I got something much better for you. You just need to get up and walk." And it was like wow. And then like you said, it's not that one defining moment. It's all these little things that started happening. It wasn't right after that. Things didn't just suddenly get great again. It was little challenges, but every little challenge you started, your confidence started to grow, right? You're like, wow. You know, and then before you know it down the road, yeah, you are in, you know, in a whole different phase of your life. So it's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I, I love what you just said about, you know, it's like everything strings together. And I think it's easy to dismiss one thing. Like in the moment, you're like, this is God. But then a week later, you're like, oh, I don't know. Was that really God? Or <laughs> like that inner negative know? dialogue, doubting, <laughs> doubting, doubting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when, when he keeps giving you all this evidence that, that combines so beautifully, it's completely unignorable. I mean, really. <laughs> That's awesome. So the freedom part came as just a a next byproduct or how did you get the salt freedom? Yeah. So what I ended up calling the program was salted freedom Mm -hmm. because it was a biblically based program around Mm -hmm. claiming freedom from your eating disorder run by me. So it all kind of made sense. And then, uh, 
it was funny because I would go by salt with my clients and then my family and, you know, they would call me my birth name. And I started to feel like that was a, another person. Like they, it, it felt like they weren't talking to me. And so it was really weird for my husband and my kids, obviously. At first they were like, really? You know, and, and uh, it took a while. This I did not, yeah, it just felt odd to them. And I didn't legally change my name for a while because I wanted to respect their process of coming in alignment with it. I didn't want to force it on them. And uh, a couple of years ago, my husband was like, okay, you're right. Like, you know, you can't feel split. Yeah. 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 And we get to honor God. And so you get to legally change your name. So I've done that. So anytime someone's like, well, what's your real name? I'm, I'm like, I pull out my license. I'm like, here you go. (laughs) Like, You want some ID? Here you go. (laughs) That rhymes, you know, it fits. Don't be split, you know, so. And that's awesome why you just explained that too, because even with your name, right, it wasn't just, you already had confirmation that, you know, salt was your name and things were happening, but it was a process before you got to that phase where it actually, you said, well, now it's time to change it, right? So it's, I think that's something that we, we, we always try and, you know, express to our audience and when we go through these different podcasts is that, you know, a lot of people are misguided in the sense that they become Christians and they think that, you know, as you walk up and you commit your life that everything suddenly just gets, you know, it's just a bed of roses. It's not true. It's a process. But that's why these like the Epic Conquerors and communities and coaching with people is so important because they help you walk through that process. And I think that's what's key. And I think, you know, like you're doing right there, it's amazing. Thank you. I think too, like what you said earlier about sometimes when you're coaching people, uh, salt stings sometimes. And sometimes we have to have those moments where something has to get exposed and it is a difficult moment to walk through because nobody wants to feel uncomfortable. But yet if we don't look at it and face it, we can't fight it and then we can't get the victory over it. So I love that that's your approach. How also do you help Christians salt identify their calling and uh, choose the courage to show up for it? Yeah, I I think that as soon as you fall in love with the Lord, you're like, okay, God, I'm in. Like, what am I supposed to do? And then it's like, you're not really sure, you know? And, uh, you know, we all have the same purpose. You know, we're all given the purpose to glorify God, be in relationship with Him, uh, surrender our lives to Him. And we all have different callings. You know, how where are you going to bloom? Where will you be planted? How is that going to look? And I think so much of the clarity in that lies in the combination of your intelligent design, you know, and also your earthly lessons. Because it is true that, uh, you know, everything that has happened to you in your life may, it may be a divine assignment, it may be a divine interruption, it may be the product of or the consequence of your choice. However, it's always available to God to turn from ashes to gold. And so Uh, I think sometimes we get that confused, like, oh, God did that to me so that I could then, well, no, no, because you're not a robot and God gave you choice. And, you know, there are also other people in the world making choices and those choices do affect us. However, it's always available to us to take those lessons, pay them forward, be of service, be a blessing to others. And so I think a lot of the trials that we've been through, they afford us the opportunity to do that. And I also think you know, our intelligent design, if, if we have this level of self-awareness through obviously prayer, which is really important, um, to look at like what really comes easily to me, what could I do all day and never get bored? What would I do for free? Uh, what do people always come to me for help with? You know, and these things feel normal to us because they're just who we are, but to other people, they're such a gift. And so, you know, combining those two things often gives you a lot of insight into the calling that you're being asked to to pursue in the name of the Lord. Wow. So that's, so you, you go through that process and then you help these, you help people identify that. Cause that's, that is, and what you said is really true. You know, I remember, wow, now I'm a Christian. What am I supposed to do? I mean, I was thank, I was fortunate enough to be blessed with someone like Dr. Judy in my life who helped me walk through that process over the last, you know, however many years that's been, but I can just imagine, you know, and that's something we've always seen in the church as well is that, you know, people come up and they get, they have that encounter with the Lord and it's like, wow, I'm so, it's awesome. And and then they run out the door and they're like, all right, well, what happens now? (laughs) What I do? You know, and that inner negative dialogue is always sent to discourage us, isn't it? And to discredit us and all those dis words, you know. So finding the courage to rise up above that and to conquer that, that's really the whole goal of all of us, right, is to overcome those messages. So kind of what was some of the pivoting things that you use 
to give yourself that courage boost that you need to just push right through all of the negative inner dialogues that happen to all of us every day. We just have to learn how to face them so we can fight them. How did you do that? Yeah, I think, well, looking at my intelligent design, I've always had, I've always had this desire to not do what everyone else is doing and to do something refreshing and unique. And it's not out of a position of ego. Like, look at me, look at me. It's like, look what's possible. Let's, let's not just surrender and be robots on this track that's already been created. Like, uh, you know, I'm so inspired by that. And so it makes sense to me too. A, a quick story. I, when I was in my state of rebellion and in, I, I was getting picked on a lot, bullied a lot, beat up a lot, uh, threatened a lot. And I aligned myself with a group of people who looked really scary and I thought could, you know, s- save me from all Protect of that torment. You. Yeah. 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 And it, yeah. and it turned out that they were, they were putting this symbol on their, on all their clothing and their hand. And I was like, I don't even know what that is, but I want to align myself with them and be protected from all these bullies. So I'm going to be one of them. And so I was a follower in that moment. And I did that. And we went to the pool hall and an adult came up to me and said, do you know what's on your hand. And I was so embarrassed because I had no idea. I just sold my soul for protection. I had no idea what it was. So I came to learn that it was a swastika. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. Now, I was horrified. Yes. And in that moment, I can see how God used that because for me, it's so important to stand for something and have the proof of why you stand for that, yes. not to be simply in blind faith, whether it's in your faith or in the world as you serve, you know, to have experiences or logical reasons why you do the things the way that you do them. And in that moment, I was afforded the opportunity to know what it's like when you sell out, when you become a follower and when you don't, you know, you don't really have the proof for what you're standing for. And so all of those things, I think, go together to support you in your calling. And I think it's, everyone's going to have to deal with haters, like you said, Judy. Yeah. And I think that really explains a lot to me why you pivoted also to now, not only do you coach, but you help people brand themselves so that they have the right branding on (laughs) and that they're true to that branding rather than just an ignorant follower. So how did you make that pivot? And what is the difference in your situation between amateur brands versus legit brands? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, spiritual alignment is huge. You know, there's a lot of unconscious copying that happens. You know, we we feel insecure. And as a result of feeling insecure, we look out, we admire, and then we don't even maybe know we're doing it half the time. But we, we start to adopt what other people are doing. And then we're simply an echo. We're simply standing in the shadow of someone that's come before us. And we're not offering our own gifts. And we do that out of insecurity. But if we know that we were beautifully and wonderfully made and intelligently designed, that we are saved by grace through faith, that we have a calling. It is ours to walk and we will be given everything we need to do it. Yes, we get to summon the courage and we get to leap and we know that God will be there for us. And we do not have to copy. That would be to mute who we were created to be. And we will never be here again. This is it, right? So (laughs) are we really going to let another human be the dictator of our value or control what we say or how we show up? No. Like, I don't want to get to heaven and hear anything but well done, my good and faithful servant. You did so much what I gave you. (laughs) Love it. Love it. You know, I was going to ask you, Salt, because, um, I mean, you're such a firecracker. I can just feel the energy when you're coming through there. And it's a question we ask some of our, uh, our, our guests. And if you, we, let's say we, we've secured this beautiful billboard for you downtown Vancouver, and you can put whatever you want on this billboard, a saying or whatever it is, what would you put on there that would represent, you know, what you're talking about and that thing that you feel would make an impact that when people came past there, they'd go, wow, or, would change their state, would just, you know, maybe just make them think about something. Gosh, like my wordsmith brain is going in about 7 million directions right now. <laughs> Yay, love it. Spit out a few of them. <laughs> we'll put up more than one billboard. <laughs> I, 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 there's a quote that I say sometimes and it's, it's not your calling that burdens you. It's your resistance to the calling. Hey, I like wow, that. that's powerful. That's, that's unique. I like that. 
Thank you. I just, I, I've always, when I look back, I can see it's my resistance to being public about my love for God. It's my resistance to surrendering my life to him. It's my resistance to be being forgiven for the wrongs that I thought were unforgivable. It's all of my resistance that has caused me pain in this life. And being in surrender to God and being a yes to the calling, however much courage it takes, however, you know, this isn't, this world is not kind to God and humans will hate the humans who, because they actually hate God is what they think. And so exactly. they're attacking God through you. And so yeah. it takes courage to do this work and, uh, and it's worth it. And I just don't want to imagine going through life without God. I don't know how people stay married. I don't know how they bring up their children. I don't know how they work without exactly. God. I don't know how I did it. I literally have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> that goes um, to, to what you always speak about, Mama J, is here in a bay, right? Yes, yes. I mean, that you always, I know you've always instilled that in me. Like, that is such yeah. a powerful concept. And I think Salt yeah. just hit it on the head. It's here in a bay because we often, we hear, but we have a big problem in the bay side. Yeah, we, we linger too long to, before we decide if we want to or not, and that's where a lot of problems come. Every episode, Salt, we have a weapon that we spotlight, a spiritual weapon. To me, hearing you, I would think perhaps, but you can share with me if you have a different one, but the weapon to spotlight today would be courage, to just have courage in the Lord that he's leading you and guiding you, and you can trust him. What do you, would you say would be your weapon to spotlight yeah, I like courage. I also like truth. You know, we live in a world where truth is believed to be relative and opinion has become truth. And, you know, there is truth and there is opinion and we really need to honor that fact. And uh, just because you believe vehemently in something doesn't make it true and neither does your disbelief make it false. And I Ooh. think it's really important for us to, I mean, the most important question is who am I and why am I here? Right. And it's like if we don't know who we are, if we don't understand that we were created in the image of God and that we are here as a purpose to glorify and worship in and, and, and is a, as a calling, we have all of these gifts. Right. And if we yeah. let them atrophy and if we die with the song inside of us and we weren't a blessing in this life, it, that regret will torment us. And uh, I just I never want that to be true for myself or my children or my clients or anyone that listens to me on my podcast. Like I just, I really want to be out there and it takes courage. So I like your choice of courage. I think it's really a key component of showing up authentically because it's not always kind. The world is not always kind. Usually there's a, like a twin weapon, if you will, because <clears throat> the word of the Lord is a two-edged sword. So I think courage and truth makes an amazing two-edged sword right here. Because when we stand in truth, real truth, God's truth, then we do automatically have courage to go forward because those work together in tandem. What do you think would be a weapon you would spotlight after listening to this uh, conversation with Salt, Chad? I mean, I, I got to go with the one that you mentioned, courage. I think just to come from where you, where you, when you just, the visual that I got of you in that field, you know, at that point where it was all over and you just, you were done pretty much saying, you know, Lord, I'm sorry that I've let you down kind of thing, but I just can't do this. And to go and then to extrapolate that forward to where you are right now and see you on and listen to you and just, you know, feel that energy and that vibrance and that life and everything that you're portraying right now. I mean, that takes epic courage to make that happen. <laughs> Yay. Woohoo. We also have an epic power affirmation that we like to share because we want to give people an opportunity to just declare some things about themselves. And so today I think our power affirmation would be, I am courageous. Let's all say it on the count of three. One, two, three. I, I am, am courageous. courageous. Woohoo! You know, it's making those kind of declarations that the spirit and the power of God just rise up within us to like combat those negative inner dialogues that the enemy tries so unsuccessfully, but sometimes sadly successfully to interject into our lives. But when we will declare what God says and declare who we are in God, whew, it does a powerful shift in us, which is really epic. And of course, our listeners are now knowing EPIC stands for Everything's Possible in Christ. And so that's why Amen. these things are important to us. Chad, what would be your closing thoughts for today? Well, I'd just like to give uh, Salt opportunity. Salt, how do people get hold of you? And you know, where can they find out more about you and what's going on in your life and what you're doing? 
um, you know, if they wanted to follow you and stuff like that. I mean, we're going to have it in the show notes, but perhaps maybe if there's anything we haven't asked you that you feel you just like to express and something that you want to leave our audience with. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, I will. I would love to connect with you further. I, I hang out mostly on Instagram. So you can find me at Salt Freedom on Instagram. I also am the voice at the Salty Truth podcast. And so if you go to saltytruth.fm, it will redirect you to the iTunes version of the podcast. If you're not an iTunes lover, you can just look up Salty Truth anywhere you listen to your podcasts and it'll be there. Uh, and as far as closing... Know that you're loved. Yeah. Know that God has your back. Know that he is for you, not against you. That there, what, Really, what can the world do to you? This life exactly. is short. <laughs> it, it is one life. It is short. And you want to play all out. You want to use all that you have, all that you were gifted with. You don't want to let any of it die. And, uh, and you know, respect God's opinion more than you respect the opinion of man. And that will direct your next best step. That's beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. We want to thank you so much, Salt, for being on our Epic Conquerors podcast today. And to all of our listeners, we also thank you for listening and for subscribing and sharing this episode with your friends as well, because you just don't know who's struggling with some of the same things that Salt was sharing with us today and how this episode could be their God's way of reaching in and giving them a pivot in their life. And then we also thank you for leaving an epic review. We love to read those. So we just appreciate all of our listeners as well, because you are epic. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's so fantastic. So we're going to close out this episode with just remembering that God cares for us so we can cast all of our cares upon him. And we know that he's got us in the palm of his hand and we are the apple of his eye. So get up and be courageous and go conquer the world because you can in Jesus name. God bless everybody. God bless. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured.